Arizona, one of several states cutting back on its water usage from the Colorado River. And while you won't notice a difference necessarily when you turn on your faucet, the farmers are largely impacted, which could drive up the price of your food. So Whitney joining us now. She went to Pinal County to see how the farmers are weathering those changes. Good morning, Scott and Olivia. You may remember last August, the federal government announcing a tier 2A shortage for the first time. In 2022, Arizona lost 18% of its Colorado River water supply. This year, an additional 3% is expected to get cut off. And 2023 starts as another year of uncertainty. Thousands of acres of alfalfa, Bermuda grass, and more spread across Arizona. Farming this land isn't just a job for Jace Miller, it's in his blood. My great-great-grandfather came and homesteaded in Gilbert in 1919 and began farming. Miller is a fifth-generation farmer in Arizona. Managing the farmland is a 24-hour operation truly in unprecedented times. In 2021, it was growing a lush, beautiful cotton crop. Now it's just growing weed. A 50% decrease in summer crops, in addition to more expensive fuel and fertilizer, ultimately means you'll be paying more for food. Less water means less hay for sale. This barn would typically be full this time of year, but this winter, that is just not the case. The average price is about $13, $14, but now it's $20 a bale. Because more expensive hay for cattle can drive up prices of meat and dairy, and it's not just Miller's Farm. So absolutely, we're going to be looking at additional cuts. Chelsea McGuire with the Arizona Farm Bureau says farmers in Arizona can grow crops you cannot find anywhere else, but there are clear challenges. While central Arizona farmers lost their access to Colorado River water, in Yuma, farmers are finding ways to grow with less. As a new legislative session begins, McGuire says her biggest focus is education, explaining what the agriculture industry does with water as there's a renewed interest in water policy among state lawmakers. You know, it's really easy to look at the statistics of the state and say, wow, agriculture uses more than 70 percent of our water. Isn't that where we should be looking to cut our water use? Well, you have to remember what agriculture does with that water and that water use is not water waste. It hurts your pride, you know, you take a lot of pride in the products you produce and the land that you cultivate. 2023 comes with new concerns. While winter is a slower season, Miller hopes they don't have to go down this road. We have not had to uh, sell off any equipment or lay off any employees, but that is, uh, that is a card that is on the table. If things don't improve, we may have to downsize our operation. Water crisis aside, this is a job Miller looks forward to every single day. You know, I guess the best description would be it's pure bliss. I mean, it's to me, it's not a job. It's 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 not even a career. It's a lifestyle, a lifestyle that runs in the family. So what exactly can we expect this year? A water policy expert who I regularly talk to at ASU tells me we likely won't see news about additional cuts for a few months. She tells me the Bureau of Reclamation is looking at a special environmental impact assessment that won't be done until March, but certainly it's something farmers, everyone in Arizona, and of course the other states that share this water will be keeping in mind. Really important perspective. It sure is. Thanks, Whitney. Thank you, Whitney.